Good morning, folks. Plasma filaments dancing on the northern hemisphere of our star. We've got a number of Earth and space science items to hit today, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the southern coronal hole system is beginning to reach up from its polar confinement. Small patches grow towards respectable size. Meanwhile, we exited an intensified solar wind stream from the previous coronal hole back on the 21st. Since that time, the solar wind density has been relatively stable, with the speed and plasma temperature of the stream eased downward slightly. All is calm at Earth's magnetic field. Top two seismic events of the last day straddled South America near the equator, 6.1 in the East Pacific, 5.6 in the Central Atlantic. The official winter snow data is up. They only numbered the odd years, but you can see bottom right, the 2020 numbers are there, and I hope this gives you an idea of what happened to us out west. We're slightly above average overall for this past season, but that is with record low snow totals for numerous cities in the eastern half of the country. Those low snow marks are real in the east, and so are those record snow events you keep hearing about out west. By the way, new visitors, it is true that spring snow cover is in decline worldwide, but otherwise, fall and winter snow cover is increasing worldwide. Learn more at the Rutgers Snow Lab. And speaking of which, spring starts with more snow as the breakdown of the polar vortex for the season in the north is pretty much leaning on the Americas for balance there. This is driving the cooler air into the region here the last few days and that's going to continue a bit more. We're at Null School one more time. Let's check out the ocean temperature anomaly in the Pacific. We've got ENSO neutral conditions for the most part with cooler water in the east and warmth in the central and western tropical regions. But wait, look up. It's not a bird, it's a plane, and this paper is co-authored by Captain Chemtrail, David Keith from Harvard. Welcome back to the show. Once again, making his case for spraying the skies as the best option to combat climate change. And even if we ignore the entirety of our climate change coverage in the usual realm, how in the world is this a better option than less waste, less toxic chemicals, more personal responsibility? No need to play God in the skies, David, especially because you're not one out to space next, so this paper is great and fully complementary of our ongoing examination of magnetic fields and plasma turbulence and their control over star formation, rather than the random collapse and gravity and chaos, but I was thinking to myself, man, I think I've read this before, but how can that be? It's a brand new release. Well, mystery was solved minutes later when I searched for the name of the paper and found the old one by the exact same name and interestingly coming to the same conclusions 40 years ago which makes me wonder what happened to the science between then and now. Anyway, there is another in that same vein here, and now the dozens of papers on this topic follow in the footsteps of that Sophia data bombshell a few years ago that magnetic fields and plasma turbulence indeed were dominating over those long-revered gravitational processes. Up next, a type 1 X-ray burst in infrared. Turns out there are significant counterparts in the after effect from the burst, which is a key sign of a nova shell release, heating the surrounding material. But please recall that while the X-ray luminosity is as powerful as a super flare or more in these Type 1 X-ray bursts, it is a nano-level nova. It wouldn't even get out to Mercury. It wouldn't get halfway to Mercury if such a thing happened at the center of our solar system. Just making sure we don't neglect the tiny nova events and... Another such example would be the dwarf nova, which they believe happens in the dusty plasma disk and which barely emits ejecta at all. But just as the stellar disk can be an inhospitable place, the protoplanetary disk can be very, very friendly. In fact, they say that the giant moon scenarios like Titan likely required something like the temperature gradient provided by a heavily dusted disk to prevent the descent of the forming moon into the forming planet. I guess you sink faster in water than you do in molasses. And last but not least, it turns out the horse named Dark Matter isn't dead yet, so if you don't mind, I'll keep kicking. We're at the stellar streams in the galaxy, and like the dwarf satellite galaxies orbiting the Milky Way, these are supposed to have and show clearly their influence from Dark Matter. But they, uh, don't. I remember when such papers were rare even in the preprint archive, but now it's routine sighting in all the top journals in the world. It's plasma cosmology. The smaller types of nova are sadly the Giannis second face of the sun. The real story of climate change triples the level of balderdash being spun by David Keith, and you can learn all about those topics with the many free videos at the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. 
right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.